Hello everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of The Living Waters. And we are going to look into another attribute of God, the power of God, the omnipotence of God and its applications. Psalm 115 verse 3 says our God is in the heavens and he does all that he pleases. This verse helps us uh, define the omnipotence of God. It is God's power, God's freedom or God's sovereignty to do whatever he pleases, whatever he wills. Before moving uh, to the application of understanding this attribute of God, we need to understand uh, this very important aspect of this attribute. God's power is a self-consistent power. That means his power works in perfect conformity with all his other attributes. The power of God is inseparable from his holiness, his righteousness, his sovereignty. It is inseparable from his knowledge, his unchangeableness, his grace, his love, as well as all other virtues that are in him. People at times ask, is there anything that God cannot do? Yes, there are many things that God cannot do because he is God. As uh, D.H. Kuyper points out from the scriptures that God cannot be tempted with evil. neither can he be tempted by any man god cannot lie god cannot change in any way god cannot do anything contrary to his his character his virtues and god cannot as the all glorious one exchange his glory for another the infinite power that god possesses is revealed to us in scriptures in in five areas number 1 the bible says god spoke and it was done by speaking his by speaking his his word of power god gave existence to all that exists god's power is revealed in his work of creation number 2 god reveals his power day by day in providence having created all things by his power by the word of his power god continues to to uphold and preserve his creatures by the word of his power number 3 God reveals his power through his sovereign rule over everything that he has created over the world. Nothing comes to pass by accident. Rather God works all things after the counsel of his own will. Number 4, God's power is is also revealed in his judgments. Imagine the power of God that was unleashed when God destroyed the wicked people um, at the time of Noah. and the powerful judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah when God God rained fire and brimstone upon those cities Romans 9:23 says that God is patiently enduring the the vessels of his wrath in order to make his power known and number 5 that would be the greatest display of God's power towards us the power that brought us salvation through Christ Jesus the power that worked when he regenerated us we who were dead in our sin the power that uh, that regenerated us the power that took away our hearts of stone and uh, hatred towards god and gave us a heart of flesh and love towards god new affections to love god the power that continues to work in our sanctification destroying the strongholds of sin in us so having seen the power of god at work what are the applications what are the personal applications number 1 god's power is infinite and limitless so i can take all my needs to him in prayer in absolute certainty that he would do it if it is if it is his will and i can be sure that he does all things for my good second application his power is irresistible job 42 verse 2 says i know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted so i can i can rest assured that he who began a good work in me will carry it unto completion un- until the day of christ jesus no matter who or what works against me Number 3 God gives his power to his children. God gives his power to his children. In Philippians 4:13 says I can do I can do all things through him who strengthens me. 
I'm fully aware that this verse, uh, this is one verse that is distorted and misused by uh, false teachers of the of the of the prosperity gospel movement. But this has nothing to do with it. Rather, it means God will give me the strength to do all things according to His will. He gives all things. He He gives the power to do all things according to His will. To do all things for which He has called me. To do all things for His glory. To do all things in obedience of His word. It means He gives me the strength to lead a truly victorious Christian life. Finally, number four, God's power is is almost always made manifest in our weakness. This sounds like a contradiction, but it is true. Our strengths, areas where we are naturally strong, where we think we are naturally strong, have the potential to destroy us if we don't submit it to God's rule. For example, uh, a person good at his work, if he is not submitting it, his work under God's rule, he can soon move from being hardworking to being workaholic, which is destructive. Similarly, our strengths, if we are not careful, we can, uh, we can end up in pride and we know pride leads to fall. On the other hand, in our weakness, we pray more. We depend on God more. We depend on the infinite power of God and the power of God becomes available to us. As 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly in my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen.